so I wanted to, a couple things or a few things I want to get to, uh, across in my presentation today. Uh, first of all, is, uh, GMPs are good, manufa good manufacturing practices, are good business practices. So if you're following GMPs, you're going to know what, how you're making your product, how you're, uh, the, you're going to get stuff to the market that uh, it meets specifications. So those are just good. You're going to have traceability throughout your manufacturing. Those are just good business practices. So GMP is a good business. Um, the, the regulators like FDA, Health Canada, EU, uh, their, their job is to protect the public health. So uh, we have to keep that in mind. The, the intent and anything that any communication with them, they want to protect the public health. At the same time, they want to have products on their market. So they're motivated to see what you have. Uh, your job is to, to prove to them that, uh, that, that it's safe and effective. And the third thing is that the whole thing has to be fluid. So it has to, yeah, you, you need to be thinking about these things while you're, you're designing and developing it so that you know what you're going to have at the end of the day. So uh, I want to start off with a, a, a history. Uh, most of the presentation is going to be tied to the U.S. market. It's a bigger market. And as it works out with, uh, with medical devices, it's easier to get it through to the U.S. I, I, wor I work right now for Exciton Technologies. We have a silver-coated wound dressing. Um, it's a class two medical device. In Canada, before we can uh, submit a license application, we have to have ISO 1345 registration. So uh, whatever the a consultant might come and tell you, it, it takes four months to get it ready. It, it, takes, it takes about a year to get everything implemented and to be ready for that, for that audit and to get the certification. In, so in Canada, you need to have that before you can even submit the license application. In the States, the 510K process, uh, you, can, you can submit it without having your quality system completely mature. You're, you have to design and develop your product, but there is no certification that's required prior to the submission. So the U.S. market is more uh, tailored to getting products on the market, and then they'll come and make sure that uh, you're, you're complying with the 820 regulations and, and that, you're, that you're following the rules. Uh, a bit of a hurdle, though, for the, for the Canadian market. Uh, in the U.S., something important to point out is the uh, 1976. So they, they did a lot of work to make sure that the products on the market in 1976 were safe. So the way that the, the regulations are structured now is that everything that, uh, that goes through is, is compared to a predicate device. So if, you're, uh, if your product, uh, when you submit your 510K, you want to make sure that it's, it's safe and effective and you're comparing it to a predicate device. And, and what that means is uh, you're going to go back to any devices that were, that were verified as safe and effective in 1976, and then uh, you're going to prove, if so, for our product at, at Exciton, we have a silver-coated wound dressing, so we go to our predict predicate device, uh, which is Acticoat's uh, silver-coated wound dressing, and we, we, we say ours is similar to that for these reasons. So that comparability is important in the re regulatory structure, and then you can, it, it could be for anything marketed in the States, uh, another medical device, or a number of medical devices. So general co concepts, uh, the pro products are regulated, uh, adulteration, so if you're not following GMPs, if your product is not, doesn't meet the specifications, it's considered adulterated, that's a bad thing. Uh, misbranding, if your labeling isn't right, uh, you need approval to market. Uh, part of the, the deal is that when you're, when you're marketing it in a jurisdiction, that uh, the government is allowed to in inspect and, and confirm that you're following the rules. And again, the, the regulatory goal is to protect the public health. Uh, I've got some links here. Uh, the, the, the regulatory bodies are good resources to help if you have any questions. Uh, for example, just classifying advice can be a little bit scary because it, you have to go through a keying process. You want to make sure you get it right. But there are resources online to, uh, to help you through that process, a lot of guidance documents. And there are, um, there are uh, mechanisms to, to discuss uh, any questions you have uh, with the different regulatory agencies. The framework. Um, so there's really two parts to the, to the medical device. So you have the regulatory submission that tells the regulatory body that it's safe and effective. Uh, the classifications are bis based on uh, risk. So the lower risk uh, products are class one, and then higher goes up from there. Um, and then there's a the quality system. So like I said, ISO 1345, it's very similar to ISO 9000. So if you're ISO 9000 uh, already, uh, it is a, the, the ISO 1345 system is based on the ISO 9000. 
classification. So very simple. For Canadian re regulations, you follow the, uh, the Schedule 1 of the uh, medical device regulations. Uh, the U.S. has a, 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 an index or a searchable a database. So there is a way to find a predicate device, find something that's similar in the market. Uh, you know, I heard a lot, of, a lot of very interesting products today. And when you're talking to the venture people and you're talking to, uh, to the funding agencies, you're talking about how special, how unique your product is. And there's nothing else like it in the, uh, in the world. But when you're talking to regulators, you have to say it's very safe, very effective, very tame. It's, it's very, just like this one, but does so just, uh, or just like these two. So you just got to take it easy and, uh, and, and try and convince them that it's safe and effective and not something bizarre. Uh, substantial equivalent. So you want to prove, you want to show a predicate device and, and predicate device can be something that is a medical device already or it could be something that's just available in interstate commerce. So something that's available on the US market. I used to work for a software company and we had a, um, a medical device that was a piece of software. And uh, one of the challenges was a, uh, one of the, the changes that we made to the software was a pretty unique. But we didn't want to do a complete new 510K so we, we, we did a, uh, a special 510K and, uh, and, sh and showed that the technology was out there in a, another, another piece of software. So it was a very low risk for the FDA to approve our, our change. Uh, five, 510K process. So class one and three, and most class two medical devices are required to file the 510K. So the 510K, this is the, uh, the, the summary of what's required. And as you can see, it's pretty good uh, information. Uh, it, it's, it's, a lot of it is um, administrative. So you're giving, you, they really want to know who they can come to in case there's a problem. So it's more of a tracing. Uh, they want to know all the information about the product, but they really want to know who are, who's the person that we can talk to if we do have a problem with this product. Uh, this device description, pretty, pretty standard stuff. And then I think there is, uh, I thought some of the things I saw today, uh, I know that uh, Smile Sonica, they were talking about their, their predicate device and, uh, the, uh, and how it, uh, it was different just in terms of indication. So they're going to have to prove uh, to the FDA that that new indication for their device, for the, for the bone healing, is, is going to be, uh, they'll have the data to, to substantiate that claim. I know that the, the DTACs had a great slide for the comparability. And uh, that's something that you'd have to put into your 510K so you have that comparability to show the, how your product compares to the other, the other products on the market.